All right, so I'm here with Just Blaze, a good friend of mine, and he's actually been involved with BGR from the very beginning. Literally the first interview I actually did on the site was with Just. So I'm really happy to have a chance to sit down with him, to talk to him, and also show you how he masterfully crafted the theme music for our show. The thing I like about the theme is it's got this kind of like ethereal piano line, but then he has these really hard drums and these like sprinkles of synths that, uh, it's one of those things that when you hear it, you know something's about to happen. Right. And once you showed me the storyboards for the animation, for the opening, I mean, if you remember, I was doing something else. Mm -hmm. And once you showed me the storyboards, I was like, no, I have something else that'll work for it. So I see that these slides you have here are kind of like, Obviously, it's not the animation, but this is like the, kind of like the base for each scene in your opening sequence. Right, like that's the intro, the power button turns, zooms past, and then right. the whole animation starts. Right, and then you kind of end up here at right. the final here. Exactly, and that's the close. Right. <laughs> So like about the theme music you did for us, I mean, mm -hmm. how'd you put that together? That's just all logic. It's 100% keyboard. logic. I don't remember exactly what plugins I used. That main piano line was one of the stock logic pianos. The synths came from uh, Gladiator and Silent. And, um, and that's pretty much it. The drums are all my standard stock right. sample drums that I, from my library that I built right. up over the years. I like the pattern. I think I might want to change the sound. Um, just make it a little bit more forceful, be a little bit more aggressive. Okay. You see how like you have that turnaround, and then you have that animation where you have the the power button kind of rotating. So you yeah, see yeah, yeah, yeah. You just cut the first, you gotta cut cut four four bars. And it kind of has those like. The appreciated blitz almost give it a little bit more of a tech, tech feel. Yeah. As far as logic goes, mm -hmm. I mean, you use that to make music, period. Yeah. You used to use like hardware, you used to the FPC, you used to the keyboards. Yeah, NPCs, ASR tens, all rolling racks and Korg keyboards. And, and all digital now. You know, it's just more concise. It's a better way to work for me. It's a better workflow. You know, I can start a record on the ground, finish it in the air. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I can finish it from a hotel room in the middle of Mumbai in the sweltering heat. The computers have finally caught up with the software, or the hardware rather, has caught up with the software. Meaning, mm -hmm. I feel like software has had the capabilities it's always had, you know? Um, we didn't always have the hardware to be able to support it mm -hmm. the way we do now. Right. For about a year, I was running Logic on my MacBook Air. Wow. You know, the last five or six records that I've made have, were all made on that MacBook Air. Which records? With uh, Lord knows, um, I don't know if you guys can use foul language here. I Love My Women right. by Rick Ross. Right. Uh, the record that I did with Mac Miller before that. Right. Everything that I've done over the past couple of years was all done on that MacBook wow. Air. And, um, you know, that wasn't possible. Even say with the first generation MacBook Air, right. that wasn't possible. So just brought a couple really amazing things with him. Actually. And they're really different. They're really, really different. So I found this in the graveyard, which was the Sony UX. It's 280, right? right? This was a 180. You had a 280. You, you were balling back then. I was broke. <laughs> uh, and it was like the forebearer to, I guess, mobile computing. Um, it was the first device of its kind. It was such an awesome concept. It was. It had a... It was a pocket PC with a flip-up keyboard, kind of like a sidekick, mouse on this side, uh, trackpad, I'm, not, I'm sorry, uh, mouse buttons on this side, small webcam, fingerprint sensor for security. Touchscreen. Oh yeah, touchscreen, built-in Wi-Fi. And yes, most of them came with Windows XP, but when I turned this one on, I forgot this one was actually running Mac OS. I hacked it to death. I had tried to install a 3G card in here. You took it out the card. Yeah, I had, a, I had OS X running on here. But you were excited to see the progression of the technology. Right. You know, like, right. you think about it, 10 years ago, we were excited about 
P935s. Right. You know, about Sky Tell to send like a text message to someone across the country. Right. You know, I feel like that P9, P935 era was a milestone. I feel like the iPad was another milestone. You know, like, I don't think we're going to look back. Like, I don't look back now at the time port and say, what the hell were we thinking? Yeah. You know what I mean? I look yeah. back at this and say, good Lord. I don't look back at the P935 sure. and do that. I don't think we'll look at the iPad and say that either. I yeah. think we'll look at that and say that's when the game changed yet again. What do you use this for? Because you make music. I make music, but you I, you know what? Soundtracks, you well, do no. scores, you do but commercials. But as a, no, as, like, I feel the... like creative people in general, um, you know, you might make your mark doing one thing, but I feel right. like us creative people have a lot of different ways that we might want to express ourselves. Like, I've actually directed a couple of videos. Um, you hosted that show, The Mix, right? Master yeah, Mix? I hosted Master of the Mix, yeah. you know, um, on BET for two years. Uh, Look out for season three, coming soon. Nice. Um, from watching a TV show from concept to shooting to editing to broadcast and kind of being in the center yeah. of all that, it kind of just really started to like, I just really got the bug. Like, I really want to try doing this. Like I said, I feel like this camera is overpriced for what it is. Right. But the main selling point for me really was it's low light performance. With the TV show and just some of the other stuff that I shoot aside for as a hobby, I'm in nightclubs a lot. Yeah. I'm, at, I'm at small concerts and small events. Yeah. You don't want to be that guy in the club with the with, light, with the giant light yeah. shining in people's faces. Yeah. You want to be able to be somewhat inconspicuous. So mm -hmm. okay, so what ISO are you shooting at then? Um, if I can boost it to about twenty thousand, like if I'm in a completely unlit environment, yeah. I can boost it to twenty thousand. Still get usable footage, and it actually looks great. The, um, you will get a little bit of noise, but the crazy thing about this sensor, and I don't know what black magic they used in there, no pun intended, right. um, but the way the, the noise translates to the sensor, it almost looks like film grain. Huh. So it's kind of like, you know, you don't mind shooting with the ISO boosted that high. Right. I actually find that, I, f I feel like the dynamic range performs a little bit, uh, get a little bit more dynamic range when you have the ISO boosted. Hmm. But yeah, just not having to carry around a bunch of lights and whatnot for me was a selling point yeah, for awesome. my, for what I do. All right, cool. Dude, thank you so much for your time. We might do a, another episode at some point. Like, yeah, we're going to have to do this. We're going to come back in the cell phone graveyard. Yeah, I'm going to bring the, the bag of, of uh, nice. you know, old phones and we're going to have a good time with that. Cool. All right, thanks so All much, nice. man. Anytime. Nice. All right.